Let's go to Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk, what a wonderful name. Do, does anybody know anybody named Habakkuk? Okay, this is the first and only Habakkuk in life. Um, Habakkuk 2, I want to read the first three scriptures of that. The reason why I said all of that is to set this up, is that your, the God's vision for your life is as important as anything else. And if you don't have vision for your life, you're going to perish. Dreams must be recorded. Okay? Um, and I'm going to combine what Pastor Sonia ministered in just a second. Let's thank God for Pastor Sonia for her yeah. tremendous ministry on last week. Yeah. Amen. I hope y'all get your lives right after that message. I mean, I just, okay, you just stop acting the fool. Get your flesh in order. Okay? I, I felt rebuked and I was driving home. I was like, what did I do? This, I love it, though, but she was absolutely right, and, and I love how she ministered that because um, that scripture, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells within you. It is not rebuking you for sexual sin. You know, we, we, when we talk about lust, we always think about sexual sin. Lust is a desire of your natural state. You can lust after sleep. You can lust after food. You can lust after negative mindsets. None of those are supposed to fit in your body. You aren't meant to be depressed. But you can fall in love with depression. You can fall in love with negativity. You can fall in love with pessimism. It doesn't fit in your body. It doesn't. We're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Okay? You ain't, have you ever had a bad day where you're just mad at everybody and you can not sleep? You know why you can not sleep? Because you're mad at everybody. You weren't built for that. We got to flush that and make sure that our mind is, and our body is renewed daily. Amen. Amen. Because it's so easy to go into the wrong mindset. Okay. If we don't get that right, we can't have good vision. It's hard to have good vision with a corrupted mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. So let this mind be at us. It's also in Christ Jesus. Habakkuk has a situation here. That's his real name, y'all. Habakkuk. You don't even need a last name when you have a name like Habakkuk. It stands on, on its own, right? So he reads his first three scriptures, all right? Habakkuk 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what God will say unto me and how I will answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me, verse 2, and he said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it delays, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not delay. All right? Let's talk vision, if you don't mind. You may have your seats. Let's talk vision for a second. In your seats, those of you who are watching online, we thank God for you. Who, who are watching, but here in the sanctuary, everyone has a, um, a notepad um, or at least a sheet there and a pen. I want you all to take that. If you are watching online, you can follow along with this because we, I, I believe in this. I believe in ratifying what we're believing God for. Everyone should have a pen. If you don't have a pen, um, please let us know. We will get a pen to you. All right, but everyone, let's take that pad, um, that sheet there. Uh, write your initials on it, all right? Make sure you have a special marking so you will know it is you because we're going to do a certain activity. Um, when I ministered about Dream On, we talked about Martin Luther King having a dream. That dream was written. That speech was written. That dream was recorded. It is in the Library of Congress right now. It is in the Smithsonian right now. It is ratified. It lasts longer than his life. Our country is founded upon the Declaration of Independence. Not the war that we won our independence, but the Declaration itself. We could have won the war, but if not for the Declaration, we still could have been taken as a country and as a nation. The Declaration is as important as the fight. And if you're going to declare something, it needs to be written and established. Amen. Amen. Okay. So whatever is in writing is verified. If it's written, it's verified. Okay. Some people have been taken advantage of because they didn't have the paperwork together. You cannot prove what's yours in a court of law unless you've got proper paperwork. Okay. 
So it's important. So we're going to write some things today. I want you to write in English. I want you to write in a way that you can understand. Write in all caps. All right, don't write in cursive because some of you, um, no one can understand it but you. So I want you to write something in a way that someone else can understand. Never know who's going to take up and help you in your vision. If you don't have it clear, they can't run. Amen. Amen. Pastor Brad, I expect to bump into somebody every day. Every day. I prepare myself to run into somebody who's going to ask me a question about what I'm believing God for. I've already rehearsed my answer and I got a note in my phone. I'm ready. You hear what I'm saying? It's not just in my heart. It's not just in my head. It's not just on a music playlist. I'm ready to do something about what God gave me. I don't need to have any emotion tied to it. They don't even have to be believers. Because God will orchestrate the mind of, and hearts of anybody to get his will accomplished. So I could be at an elementary school on Tuesday, and there may be somebody there that God has already ordained, and I'm ready to talk to them. You hear what I'm saying? And if they say, I need a copy, do you want a color or black and white? Which one do you want? Because I'm ready to give you what I'm believing God for. Habakkuk, in, in, chapter, uh, in chapter one of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is a prophet, and God disturbed the prophet in chapter one with a unique burden. The whole chapter, the Lord is speaking to him about a burden in the land. A lot of stuff was going on. And in chapter two, Habakkuk said, in order for me to get in place to do something about what the Lord showed me, I've got to get into another position. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. I cannot do anything about what God just gave me in the same place he gave it to me. So he says, I'm going to reset. I'm going to get into another place so I can hear what the Lord is telling me about what he just told me. He gave me a revelation about what what's happening, but he didn't give me solution. I'm going to change my position so I can get solution until he speaks to me and then I'll respond to him based on what he says. This is a man who understands how the Lord works. In one phase, God gave him the burden. And I believe this, your vision has to have a burden attached to it. Your vision just can't have profit attached to it. It can't just have attached to it, you, you will create it to solve a problem. And you may have a problem that you yourself can't solve. But yet he will ordain and anoint you to solve another problem. And while God ordains and anoints you to solve another problem, he's sending answer to your problems as well. I love that. God's vision is always about community. It's never in isolation. Whenever God gives you anything, somebody else is attached to it. And so he will, ne he will rarely ever give you the thing to answer your own need. Because he's sending somebody else to do that. He's going to keep us all employed. I love that. I love how I can be a blessing to you and need prayer too. I love that. I love how God can, can keep me up uh, um, on a week's end and, and all night Saturday night and all going to the Sunday morning praying and believing God for you to give you a word and I need a word from somebody else. I love that. Barbers usually don't cut their own hair. That's what I heard. I'm bald. I, it's been a while. But I heard usually barbers don't cut their own hair, but they can look at somebody else's hair and know what to do. Amen. So when God gives you vision, there's already somebody else attached to it. And you can't do it without burden. Amen. Burden keeps you in it. Yes. When you get frustrated about it. I'm going to say that again. Burden keeps you in it when you get frustrated about it. Because vision ain't easy. <laughs> vision ain't easy. All, right? All kind of stuff will go on in your world when you say yes to God. Vision is not easy. And it is very easy to quit. Amen. Well, yes. It is very easy to quit. But it's hard to quit something that you have a burden for. You hear what I'm saying? I have stopped pastoring mentally 972 times. Okay? Never here. Always in process. 
Always on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Always when things get tough, all right? Never on Sundays, all right? Well, a couple of Sunday afternoons when I didn't preach well. But other than that, I have unofficially quit already about 972 times. And you know why I keep coming back? That burden for this vision. Because if I quit, people perish. There are lives attached to that dream you barely believe in. There are lives attached to that thing that you're kind of dabbling in right now. And, and, and you started well, but life hit, hit you hard. And, and let's see the hands of people who have life. Life has never hit you hard before. Let's see the hands of people who, who hasn't. Okay, that's what I thought. All of us have not just had patches, not just a rough patch. We've had like a rough terrain. Like it's, it's, like it's five or six months of this thing. And God still means for you to do what he called you to do. Yes, because he gave you that vision. And you can't run from it. It will eat at you. On the instant, some of y'all are feeling it right now. It's like, okay, I really don't want to do this. You have to. He built you for it. He built you for it. And there's timing associated with it. Okay? But he tells us, like he told the back it. Write it. Write it. Write the vision and write it in a way that a second grader can understand it. Right? Write it in a way that you can't forget it. Write it in a way that there is no way to confuse it. I have taken notes sometimes, and I, when I was in service, I would take notes, and those notes would be so deep. All right? I mean, it's just, oh my God. Just powerful, just, just deep. And then six months later, I'll go back to it and I have no clue as to what this means, even though it's in English, but it was in the spirit of the moment, right? But I don't, I don't get it now. And I want you to be able to write your vision where there's no emotion involved, where no one has to feel it. They could just see it. I'm going to say that again. I want you to write it in a way where no one has to feel it because they can see it. Well, the words come off the page and they can see it. Because we don't move by feelings well. You can't. Because you will feel one thing this week and not feel it next week. Vision is not about feeling. It's about seeing. It's vision. So I don't have to feel it. I don't have to feel it. I need to record what I see. And stay with what I see until it becomes alive. Amen. 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 So now he tells him, you have to do this because it won't last forever. Verse 3 says vision is for an appointed time. You are not going to have that burden forever. Which means whatever God has given you in your heart and in your mind, you have to do something about it now. Can I be very candid with y'all? Do y'all know how New Identity got started? Do you know where New Identity got started? Because I had the, the, the mandate of pastoral ministry on my life for a while. But I was comfortable in leading worship. I was comfortable in leading worship. Okay? I'm, I was amongst a, a bunch of people recently who said, oh man, I miss your worship. Because it's entertaining for people. And I understand the entertaining aspect. Okay? All right? I, I was good at what I did. Okay, you can you can be humble and still be honest. Hello, I didn't say I was the best of all time. I'm saying I was good at what I do. Okay, I felt some kickback on that. It's like, oh, that's arrogant. It's not arrogant. No, no, it's false humility when you say, no, I'm not. No, you, no, no, I was good. No, I am good at what I do. I'm just, I'm just. just you want me to leave worship tomorrow? I'll do it. I, I, I do it. Jesus was humble and very well aware of who he was at the same time. Okay? He will literally tell you, I am the way, the truth, the life. You can't even get to God except by me. Yeah, and still be humble at the same time. He will tell you, no man will take my life. I'll lay it down. I'll pick it back up in three days. He, like, he, he already, that's, that's not arrogant. I know who I am. Maybe we're not getting to where we are when we don't acknowledge who we really are. No, 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 I am great. I didn't say I was greater than you. I'm saying I'm great, though. 
Hello, you can't do great things when you think of yourself this way. No, 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 great is the Lord and the greater ones in me. That means I'm great too, bro. Yep. Tell somebody, oh no, you're great, for real. You really are. Kidding me? You kidding me? You are great. Hello? And great people do great things. What are you believing God to bring to fruition in your life this year? Some people are already writing. You can write the question and the answer. What are you believing God to bring to fruition in your life this year? Now, it doesn't have to be material. It could be personal. Amen? It doesn't have to be tangible. It could be very intangible. However, Whatever spoke to you when I asked you that question, write that. And write it in English, please. Write it in a way that we can understand. I'm going to continue to speak as we're doing this. It's so important. It's so important. You may have done this before, but I believe there's a strength on it now. I believe there's a strength on it now. Amen. Amen. When you're done, look up. Just let me know. Because we're going to write something on the back as well. If you need another. <laughs> we, got, we got some writing. I love it. I love it. Because we're multifaceted people. When God gave Habakkuk this vision, he let him know this for a point of time. It's for an appointed time. So is the waiting. The waiting is for an appointed time, too. And we can get frustrated because we may know what we're called to do. We just don't have any traction. But if you're in the will of God, the waiting is as important as him speaking to you. All right? So he says to him, though it delay, wait for it. All right? You see the word tarry. I think that's the version that I have. All right? Tarry is mentioned twice in that scripture, and it means something different each time. Okay, and the first time it says, though it may tarry, in that version, it means though it may be delayed. Though it may be taking too long by your standard. Wait for it because it will not tarry. When it says it will not tarry, it means that it will not be out of timing. Okay? So though it may be taking too long for you, wait for it. It won't be out of timing. Which means you're going to see it. Okay, you're going to see it and you have to have confidence in the delivery date as much as as the promise itself. Okay. All right. Faith is literally the tracking number. I don't need any. (laughs) It is the tracking number. All right. The only thing is, it's a tracking number to a destination date that we don't have. All right. I've got a slip. I know it's coming. When? It's coming. When? It's coming. I don't know. Okay. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming, okay? And so while I'm waiting for it to come through, I'm going to start behaving as if it's here. I'm going to adjust my life towards the vision God has given me because it's not t- when you get it, it's not now time to act on it. You have to change your capacity for what you believe in God for. I am going to say that again. You have to change your capacity for what you are believing God for. All right, so I'm going to do this very simple. Um, put my friend on the spot. I'm going to call Janine Poole to come join me. Amen. Let's give a hand to Janine Poole. If we can get Janine a microphone, Janine's going to come here. Come on. She is, she is in full Houston. God sent her from a, a north wind you know, from Chicago and brought her here. Amen. And now she is wearing Astros colors and, um, and all of that. Let's make sure your microphone is on. Hello, Janine. Hello. Hello. Yes. So, Janine, you and another one of our members who I really want to put on the spot, oh. but I'm somewhat afraid of her. Um, <laughs> you and Gabriella um, participated in something yesterday. Very briefly, can you tell us what that was? It was a 5K race. 5K race. That, that, yeah. Come on. Let's. She doesn't want to be on camera, but I believe uh, Gabriella finished in first place. Is that is that? No, is that? 
Is that is that is that is that true? She she, she was first out of us. First. <laughs> It was three of us, and she was number one. I love that. Come on. First of something. But actually, actually, let me elaborate on that, because they break the race down by age group mm. and then by gender. Okay. And so when I looked at our trackings, I went and I looked at all of ours. Gabby came in before me. Now, I don't remember all of her numbers, but out of the women, there was 236 of them in our group. She was before me, I was 84. Mm. So that was more than half. Yeah. She was in the first quarter yeah. of people that came in. So, oh. <laughs> so there are two things that work here that I love because she is now speaking of someone other than herself in this and celebrating this. And I, to I told us, talk to us about dreaming that you can't be so engulfed in your dream that you are not supportive of someone else's. Okay? And it has to be genuine. We're not, we're not playing this game with God. It's like, okay, I'm a support because I know how the system goes. If I bless them, you bless me. No. Being a blessing to someone else is the blessing. Yeah. Okay? So I'm going to ask you a few questions here and they're going to apply, apply right here to vision. Here. Okay. So when did you decide you were going to run this race? Um, well, it's a dream that has come back. So it was something that I did years ago. Um, in my family, I was the first one to participate in a race back in Chicago. Right before I left, I did a 10K. And then my sister, the one, Dion, she got that bug in her. I stopped running. She picked it up. Yesterday was her 14th time doing that hot chocolate race. So next year, she's in their legacy. She gets another honorary award. Um, then after my sister, my stepmother, now this is another baddie. She is 68, going on 70? Or maybe she is in her 70s. I'm not sure yet. But she picked up running. Okay. And now she runs to the point, and when I say she comes in first, she literally comes in first in her category, first woman across the line in her age group, and she even passes some of the younger women. So seeing her do it year over year over year, I'm like, okay, I can't let her show me up. <laughs> Just be real with you, I can't let her show me up. So. I started, I'm like, okay, I got to get healthy. How do I get healthy? I need a, I need a target. I need a goal. I need something to set my eyes upon that makes me want to keep going towards it. So I, t I don't even know. I think I may have told Gabby first. Sorry, baby. Uh, <laughs> but I decided I was going to do a race every month. And so, actually, no, I did tell you first. I'm sorry, because you're the one who told me about Gabby. He told me, he says, well, I think Gabby wants to do a race. And so I'm like, okay. And I called Gabby up and I said, okay, you want to do this? And so we made a mission that we're going to do a race every month. And um, the slogan of yesterday was, one down, 11 to go. <laughs> so you had done it before. And stopped. Slept. Long time. Long time. <laughs> For w many reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay? And none of the reasons kept you from getting back up. Amen. No. Leads me to my second question that I want you to write on the back here. Stay with me for a second. Let me know when y'all are ready. What are your present challenges or hindrances to achieving your vision. So I'm going to ask you to do this. Do you, do, you, do you have all of those? Okay. Are they down over there? Fantastic. Um, I'm going to allow you to cross behind me, Brother Mario, um, Pastor Brad, I'm crossing behind me, and I want us all to take one, if you don't mind. Yeah. 
So let's get a blue one. Let's get a green one here. If you need another, because there's more blue over here than green, so we're probably going to have to come back over. Um, but I want you to grab one that does not belong to you. Did y'all do this too? Y'all didn't do this either. Woe be unto y'all. All right. Um, yes. Give them time to write. Give them some green ones over there. Thank you for ducking. I appreciate it. And they just pass it to one or the other. Amen. Let's keep that going. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to create a particular culture that we cover one another. Amen. 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 I want us to, to, to have a culture here that we believe in one another's dream. Amen. Yes. I gave the example a few weeks ago about Martin Luther King doing the I Have a Dream speech. And the reason why he was prompted to, to, to do that particular part of the speech was because Mahalia Jackson was behind him saying, tell him about the dream, Martin. Yeah. Which means he was able to confide in someone else the dream that God had given him. Amen. He had support. This is a man who was risking his life to march, risking his life to speak, was ultimately assassinated as a result of it and didn't even reach 40 years old. But he told somebody else his dream, a person that he could trust. And that person was right there, had his back when he was re relaying that dream. And we would not be here in this room right now had not that dream been verbalized. All right. So we are writing, young men. Um, Yes, young. He looked at me like me. Yes. Um, what are you basically? What are you believing God to come to pass in your life this year? All right. Does everyone have one? No, they're still doing it. Yeah, they're, they're writing. <clears throat> now, do y'all have someone else's? Y'all have someone else's. You don't. You're still waiting on a couple of people. Do we have anyone? Anything left in those? All right, let's get let's give them. Okay. Hmm, it may not be. Let's let's check and see. They're blue. They they may have another blue one. Let's let's just give them. They're gonna pray for somebody. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna pray for what we read. Okay. We're gonna pray for what we read. And whoever read it, we're gonna cover it. I want you to know that God doesn't tease you when He gives you dreams. Okay. I I want you to look beyond. Um, missed fish before um in the bible in luke 5 the disciples were uh, they weren't disciples yet but they were fishermen and they had cast their nets out and they were washing their nets because they didn't get anything and jesus comes upon their boat and says uh, go out into the deep and cast your nets out and they were like oh we've been out here all day we didn't get anything and i want you to know that they were fishermen okay this is their trade bro this is what they do do you can you imagine going to work and you worked all day and you got nothing accomplished and someone's coming to you and telling you, I'm going to do it again. What do you mean do it again? I didn't get anything done today. And when you wash your nets, that is a, a sign that the shop is closed. Okay? I don't know if you've ever seen a fisher net, a fisherman's net, but those aren't easy to wash. Okay? It takes a lot of work in the washing, especially when you didn't get anything. All right? <laughs> That's... Can I wash some fish residue off? No, nothing is on it. I'm a, I still got to clean it. And he says, well, nevertheless, at your word, I let out the net. And they let out the net, and then there was so much fish that came to them that the net broke. And you will think that's a symbolism of, of a great thing. It's actually a symbolism of a lack of trust. Because he told them to cast your nets. They cast out one net. They didn't fully invest in what God said. And as a result, God still did what he said. They just can manage it. And if you're going to be a woman or a man of God, you have to fully invest in what God is saying to you, even in the face of previous disappointment and failure. I put it out the last time. It didn't work, but I'm going to put it back out this time because God's in the boat now. And you have to have that much trust in God, not in yourself, but have that much trust in God that he's not going to embarrass me when I follow him. Okay? So whatever you have written, the second thing that we're writing, guys, is what are your biggest challenges? That's on the other side. Okay? All right? Y'all can just switch that at the table. Just make that quick. Praise the Lord. Does, does everyone have something? Does everyone have something? I'm fine. I'm, I'm praying for everybody. Okay? All right? Amen. 
This is what I want you to do. Whether you're standing or sitting, whatever your prayer posture is, I want us to now read what we have. Just go ahead and read. If you can't, if you can't read it, raise your hand and we'll help you read it. Now, everyone in this room wrote something, right? You're holding someone's heart in your hand. You're holding some, this is a very vulnerable thing for somebody to do. You're holding the passion of their heart, the key to their life. You're holding that in your hand right now. You did it too. Someone has what you've written in this room. Someone has it. I want you to pray for what you're reading right now as if you wrote it yourself. I want you to, if it has nothing to do with you, I want you to pray for both sides. I want you to pray for what they're believing God for and to also come against what's hindering them from achieving it. And I want you to feel exactly what they feel as you pray. I want you to feel that burden. I want you to feel their, 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 their inhibitions. I want you to feel their concerns. I want you to, to feel the enormity of the vision that God has given them. And I want you to go for it. Can we do that? And I believe if we're praying for one another, that as we are praying, God is answering our prayer. Amen. He's answering what we're praying for, and he's also answering what we put down because he's giving the answer to somebody else. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Once again, take whatever posture that you have, whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, whatever posture that you have, let's take that right now. Amen. Amen. And let's just pray with one another. Let's pray for one another. Whether you know the person or not, let's just do that. Let's pray with great belief. Let's pray with great belief. Hallelujah. 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 Love that. It's Lord. And as we pray today, we believe. We believe wholeheartedly. And our God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that works inside of us. As we pray, we believe wholeheartedly that what God has given us, it will come to pass and it will be greater than we've ever seen or dreamed. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think, we pray now for everything that we have seen in this in this paper that we're holding we pray now that the light of the understanding comes open I, god we thank you for direct strategy you are a strategic god you know how to bring all things to pass god i thank you lord god i thank you for bringing all things to pass concerning the vision that's been written on these papers thank you lord god for giving us the belief in our own selves that we are more than able to do what you've given us. We are more than able to do what you've given us. We are not slow. We are not weak. We are not insolent. We are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for redeeming us from previous disappointment. Thank you for redeeming us from times when we got it wrong. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. We stand in your confidence. Even if we don't believe in our own selves, we believe in you. We trust in you. You bring all good things to pass. God, I thank you for every resource that's necessary to fulfill the vision that you've given us. Thank you, Lord God, that you're sending people, you're sending resources, you're sending everything we need to do what you called us to do. Thank you for our eyes of understanding coming open, that you may have called us to things that we don't have experience in, that we don't have the intellect currently, that we don't have the relationships currently, but if you say so, it is going to happen. And we trust in that. Thank you, Lord God, for making us ready. Thank you for giving us the courage to begin to prepare for what you called us to. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the courage to prepare for what you called us to. 
Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the courage to set discipline in order that we may change our course and the way we behave and the way we manage our days so you can trust us with what you're giving us. Thank you, Lord God, for the focus that is necessary to be all that you want us to be. And we declare that as we pursue what you've given us, that nothing is going to be missing from our homes, nothing is going to be lacking, no relationships with our spouses or our children are going to be uh, negatively affected. None of our friendships that you've ordained are going to be negatively affected. I thank you, Lord God, for surrounding us with everything that we need. As your word declares, that you've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we will do it in Jesus' name. We silence the voice of anything that's trying to come against us. We silence the, the plan and the motive of anything that's trying to come against us. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. There will not, there will not be a negative return on what you've given us. There will not be a negative return over what you've given us. There will not be a negative return. What you have given us will come back to you and bring you glory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We will be young enough and strong enough to walk in what you've given us. We will see it in our lifetime. It will not just be inherited. We will see the promises of God. As your word is declared, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We'll see it in our lifetime. We'll see it today. We'll see it this year in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you, Lord God, for ministering to our physical bodies. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the discipline to take care of our physical bodies that we may run this race with great stamina and energy and do all that you called us to do. Hallelujah. We thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. We bind the voice of frustration and anger and, and, and dissent and chaos, but we will follow your plan with peace in Jesus' name. I thank you for every soul that is attached to the vision that you've given us. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every person that we do not know and have not met yet that is waiting on our yes to be fulfilled. I thank you for their lives now in Jesus' name. They're not going to have to wait too much longer because we're going to do what you called us to do. We're going to run this race with fervor and we're not going to look back. We will do everything that you called us to do. In Jesus' name. Jesus name in Jesus name every plot that's been set against us will not work every trap that we do not see yet it will not work it will not work we are overcomers we are more than conquerors we are triumphant in every place we will do what God called us to do in Jesus name God I thank you for encouraging our hearts when we feel isolated when there's not a phone number to call, when we feel that we're alone, I thank you for visiting us and giving us your presence to let us know that we are never alone, that you are always with us. I thank you for giving us comfort even in night seasons when it's hard for us to sleep, when it's hard for us to go to bed and get rest. I thank you for your comfort by your spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us comfort to alleviate anxiety in every way, that as we worship you, your peace is released. As we praise you, your peace is released. And we receive your peace that passes all understanding. According to your word, the God of peace shall crush Satan under our feet. And so we stand in your peace knowing that as we walk in your peace, that our adversary is defeated in Jesus' name. And we set our affections on things above. We will not have low thinking, but we will think as you think. We will declare what you declare. We watch our own mouths and we watch the words that we release. But we say what you want us to say. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 hallelujah.